dólares en la puerta y por Eventbrite, 10 dólares. Eventbrite.com, 10 dólares. En la puerta, 15 dólares. Si quieres el buffet, son 13 dólares adicionales en la puerta. No te lo pierdas, habrá música, comedia, artistas del patio y internacionales. No te lo pierdas en Café Mineiro. 8204 Crystal Clear Lane, Suite 1700, Orlando, Florida. Café Mineiro Brazilian Steakhouse en la 8204 Crystal Clear Lane. Bohemia 2, la extravagancia continúa. Bueno, mi gente, este es JJ Rodriguez. Aquí estamos en Listen to Me with Scotland Calhoun. We're here in another day in the Summer Production presents the award nominated and award winning Listen to Me. La política, lo que está pasando en Florida y en el mundo entero. Everything and anything that is happening in Florida and in the world because we're broadcasting in cyberspace. That is the beauty of internet radio. You could hear us, you could see us. And remember, uh, once this show goes on, off the air, you could see it in Bilingual Broadcasting Network in BB and Info in YouTube and in Facebook. Bueno, mi gente, muchas cosas estamos pasando, pero quiero mi monólogo. Se lo voy a dejar pasar a otra persona en español. I'm going to uh, let this monologue run in Spanish from another friend of mine, a very good actor. His name is Héctor Travieso. He's a Cuban um, actor in Puerto Rico. Many, many years. Uh, he's done series. He's done uh, uh, basic uh, 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 sitcoms. He's also been in a very uh, popular uh, gossip company con la comay, and he is talking about Puerto Rico and how how Trump has helped Puerto Rico, and this, this is dedicated to a couple of socialists and communists that are in Puerto Rico. I'll do the translation of the talking points, but today my talking points and my monologue for two minutes will go to Mr. Héctor Travieso. Here we go. Eso aprobó y Trump firmó asignación de 15 mil millones de dólares para Puerto Rico. Mírenle la carita ahí a los socialistas y comunistas que lo odian. Mírenle ahí que estaban apostando a que no nos iban a dar nada para poder seguir hablando mal de Estados Unidos. Ahora los cojo a ustedes. Vamos al desglose. Mire, vienen 4.800 millones en fondos Medicaid que se asignan de ahora hasta septiembre del 2019. Esto está sujeto, obviamente, a que Puerto Rico cumpla con las reglas de estadísticas y de fraude, porque ha habido mucho fraude. 11 mil millones del programa CDBG. ¿Qué cosa es CDBG? Un programa comunitario para el desarrollo de viviendas e infraestructura. Y de ahí, de ahí se sacan 2 mil millones para modernizar la red eléctrica. Así que ahora la autoridad va a valer más de lo que valía cuando María, antes de María y después de María. La van a hacer nueva. Viene por ahí también 150 millones para pareo de FEMA, 14 millones para el plan WIC, 16 millones para el telescopio de Arecibo. Mira, se salvó IT, IT Phone Home. Le metieron, le metieron 16 millones también, etcétera, etcétera, etcétera. Pero ahora en serio, lo más que me impresiona es que se hace accesible a créditos contributivos. Escuchen bien, se hace accesible a créditos contributivos, empresas que se establezcan en Puerto Rico y que el censo federal certifique como zonas de bajos ingresos o zonas deprimidas. Así que no todo está perdido con la reforma contributiva, donde se especuló que se iban las fábricas y que esto se iba a chavar, porque esta gente va a poder deducir y se van a quedar aquí en Puerto Rico. Se van a crear más de 27 mil plazas de empleo, casi 30 mil plazas de empleo. Y con lo que nos tienen que pagar las aseguradoras que se están guillando, se están guillando Rivera Río, oíste, Puerto Rico puede recibir más de 40 mil millones de dólares. Esos son chavos. Mira, comunista y socialista de aquí, que estás en Puerto Rico, papá, míralo ahí. Ese es el macho tuyo, Donald Trump. Ese es el hombre que te gusta a ti. Ok, no es como el asesino viejo asqueroso Raúl Castro en Cuba, porque este tendrá defecto, pero Raúl Castro es un asesino asqueroso en Cuba que tiene una fortuna de más de 3.500 millones de dólares mientras el pueblo se muere de hambre. Y el otro Nalgú, asesino de Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, que ya mismo se va. Nosotros tenemos dignidad y nos merecemos lo que viene de Estados Unidos porque somos ciudadanos americanos. Que vivan los Estados Unidos, que viva Puerto Rico y abajo los comunistas, como los tres o cuatro que hay por ahí que viven odiando a este hombre. Mira, este es el macho tuyo, se lo tienen que tragar hasta el 2020. <risa> ¡Socialista, mamalones! <risa> bueno, mi gente, basically, uh, Héctor Travieso is talking about Um, and, and thank you, Hector. Uh, thank you very much for giving me that Facebook Live. 
Hector Travieso is a, is a very avid anti-communist. Uh, he speaks about Nicolas Maduro uh, raping and pillaging Venezuela. Um, Scotland, you've been here when we've had uh, people from Venezuela talking about. He's also talking about how uh, Raul Castro has millions and millions of dollars, yet Cuba pe people in Cuba are still struggling to get uh, a decent medications in Cuba. Another thing that he speaks about, and that's part, part of my closing arguments from my monologue, is that many communist people, many socialist people that live in Puerto Rico say that Donald Trump hates, hates, hates Puerto Rico. That is so far from the truth. And Mr. Hector Travieso, uh, a, a, a gentleman who is not Puerto Rican born, he's Cuban born, but, but lived the latter part of his life and made his artistic life in Puerto Rico is telling these communists and telling these socialists that they are stupid, ignorant individuals because Trump has given not only money for infrastructure, has given money to rebuild the electrical grid. Even the Arecibo Observatory, the largest radio telescope in the world, which is in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, even got millions of dollars. That's why he was saying that ET phone home, because we'll be able to listen to ET for many, many years. <laughs> the thing of it is, again, again, I do not want to sound like a broken record, but Puerto Ricans here in the United States, American citizens of Puerto Rican descent. I'm not talking about New York. I have nothing <laughs> about New York. It's like Rosie New Perez. Ricans. New York Ricans. <laughs> it's, it's about how Rosie Perez says it. Being Puerto Rico is a state of mind. But this mm -hmm. is people who are truly born 100%. And those that have Puerto Rican in their sense, in their heritage, even if they're not born there, they have to understand that the only way that Puerto Rico could get out of its own quagmire is with two senators and five congressmen in the United States Congress. That's it. So again, my plan is very simple. Plan one, sit the C Commission of Equality uh, uh, commissioners uh, that has been set off by the uh, governor of Puerto Rico that const constitutes of two senators and five congressmen. Two of them are Democrat, two of them are Republican, one is an independent. That commission is split down the middle, down party lines, both in the Senate and both in its congressional delegation. You could sit them down, let them run their course, and try and help Puerto Rico. If that doesn't sit, sit well with the, with the United States Congress, well then make a law that will ask Puerto Rico a basic two basic questions whether you want to be a state or whether you want to be an independent nation we cannot have any form of colonial rule as an option because colonial rule is what has placed Puerto Rico in this problem it's either statehood or independence and a second ballot that that will be validated only and only if statehood wins if statehood wins the second ballot will become validated and in that second ballot we will choose our two senators and our five congressmen or six congressmen depending on the on on, on the uh census and on july july 4th of the following year we raise a flag with 51 stars we raise a flag on july 4th of the following year of ratifying that vote we sit our two senators, we sit our five congressmen, we let Puerto Rico lobby with the other states in the greatest Congress, uh, the greatest political hemicycle that has ever existed is the United States Congress. But for the first time in 150 years, we'll have two votes in the United States Senate, and we will have voice and vote in with five congressmen. Very simple. We could continue to have other states speak for Puerto Rico or we have the choice of Puerto Rico having its own voice in the United States Congress. What I am asking is not over the over the top. Yeah. Uh, we will have in the following weeks uh, with uh, Scotland's uh, help, we will probably have Gary Berrios. We will have other uh, politicians of Puerto Rican descent, of Puerto Rican heritage that will be coming here. We'll be going to be starting to raise our voices to make sure that we make sure that the White House and Congress has to understand that the right and will of 3.3 million American citizens in the island of Puerto Rico and 3.4 million citizens, American citizens of Puerto Rican descent that are living in the United States and Florida, there's a lot of them. <laughs> now, 
our topic for today and what we're going to be discussing with my, my very esteemed colleague, uh, Scotland Calhoun today, is the term rhino. Rhino. Rhinoceronte. What is a rhino? Que es un rhino? Rhino is a Republican in name only. A Republican that has uh, uh, sides himself with the Republican Party, but has Democratic values. Are there dinos, Democrats in names only? Has that come the the consensus of Orange County right now in Orange County politics in nonpartisan races or partisan races? We're going to discuss that because there is a sheriff's candidate that is a Latino who is a conservative but is running as a Democrat for the Orange County Sheriff's Department. Is there any con con consistency? Is there any, is there any knowledge? Is there anybody out there? I don't know, we're broadcasting in cyberspace. La cosa es que nosotros tenemos que poner en perspectiva que la política es algo embrollado, está metido, entrelazado. It has more webs than Spider-Man and, and Hulk together. Okay, it's like a mishmash of stuff. Are there rhinos among, among our myths? Are there dinos among our myths? Is the only way to win a Democratic seat in Orange County is to go into the Democratic Party and win and then say, I'm a conservative? Scotland, how you doing today, my dear? I'm we're doing here. Good. Oh, by the way, we're celebrating one year of Listen to Me. Yeah! Cumplimos el año. Yes, 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 yes. We need some celebration. Yes. Vitoreo, Vitoreo. <laughs> But boo ya, boo ya, boo ya, boo ya, boo ya. I know that you've come in, came in at the latter part, but hopefully uh, you can, we can celebrate the second and third year. Mr. Yes. Miguel Monte, muchísimas gracias por permitirnos estar en su uh, radio UNT. You know, it was one year ago oh. when I came into the radio station and Miguel looked at me and said, who is this guy? Why are you going to do? Why are you going to do my radio station, man? I can hear but, him say that. <laughs> But we've had a lot of fun. We've been nominated uh, twice. Uh, we've won one of the awards, which was the Sacro Imperio Awards. And uh, now we're talking about rhinos, right, Scott? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what do you think about this? Uh, and and, and um, people, uh, we talked about the different um, knowledge of what people thought their party stood for. But mm -hmm. this is a little bit more, much blurrier. These mm -hmm. are people that say they're Republicans but they're Democrats or they're Democrats and they're Republicans. It's like, it's like a twilight, political twilight zone. I think in the last 30-ish years, the lines have already been blurred mm -hmm. where the establishment on both the Republican and Democratic side are now one. Mm -hmm. They both share the same values, they're just registered differently. And for example, George W. Bush admitted that he voted for Hillary. and. We all thought he was this strong core Republican, and in reality, he's just another Democrat. He's just Rhino. He's a Republican in name alone. And so I think I I appreciate the fact that they want to stay registered Republican, um, but I do I would like them to just come out and say, eh, nope, I'm really not a Republican. Or they might not even know they're really not a Republican, and they're just so set on their ways that they're a part of the establishment, and they're so comfortable with their ways that they're not going to admit it. That's true, but um, you know, Joe Lopez, he he's the he's the candidate who's running for a sheriff, yes. a sheriff count, uh, Orange County Sheriff. I'm Facebook friends with him. Yeah. Um. um so <laughs> basically, he uh, he says here, Orange County deserves someone in the sheriff's office who will uh, leave the sheriff's office to combat violent crime, build a stronger relationship between the community and the sheriff's office, increase the deputies on the street sooner. Uh, uh, but Joe Lopez can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's true, any politician that wishes to run for any elected uh, position cannot do this alone. Yeah. He needs he needs to put the house. His campaign manager is a Republican. Mm -hmm. He has several, even um, past the last Republican sheriff, Kevin Barry, mm -hmm. has is, is come out and endorsed him. So we need to probably get Kevin Barry to come into our show and say, What's, can you explain this phenomenon to me? Because one of the things that caught my eye, my, my ear, well, the good ear, um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, 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 was that Joe Lopez said that to win in Orange County, he would have to win as a Democrat. Which is correct. So what is the state 
of the Republican Executive Committee in Orange County. What? Why is it even well, there? Unfortunately, we've already lost Orange County in voters. Mm -hmm. So 80% of Orange County is Democrat. And we know that. Orange County commissioners know that. Anyone who is involved in politics know that we have already lost Orange County in voters. Mm -hmm. And that is why Demings fought for it to be a partisan race is because he knew he would not win against Spike unless it was a partisan race, which he fought and he got it to be partisan and he won by a lot. And Spike knew afterwards... I'm not going to win. It's impossible. You have a D next to your name. You're a black man. You're a Democrat. You're going to win. And unfortunately, that is how it is. Um, I love Spike. I endorsed him. I He will always have my support if he wants to run again. But um, the guy who is a Republican that's running as a Democrat, um, I know his campaign manager. He only does campaigns for Republicans. And his resume is fantastic. Um I, it's sad that he has to run as a Democrat because I know he's a conservative. Um, but unfortunately, because it is a partisan race, the only way to run the sh win the sheriff's race is to be a Democrat. Well, let's, let's listen. Out of his own Facebook, uh, there, is a, there is an interview. So let's hear a little bit of that real quick. It's, I'm, I'm not, it's six minutes long. I'm not going to go the six minutes, but let's see what, what they say. Let's hear Mr. Lopez in his own words, interviewed by Juan Carlos Manzanet at Florida Highway Patrol, and he's made an exciting choice to run for sheriff in Orange County. Uh, we've had Jerry Demings for eight years, so it's time for some new blood in that office. And uh, we're just gonna take a little bit of a walk here, and, and I want you to tell me first a little bit about yourself, who you are as a person. Well, um, I was born in New York. I'm the son of uh, two Cuban immigrants that came over from Cuba. My father went to school here when he was a kid in the Bronx and uh, came over in 1961. My mother came over and, um, and she moved to the Bronx and that's where I was born, I was raised. Uh, came here to Florida when I was 15 years old and I went to high school down in, um, in Miami and then I joined the Marine Corps. Went in the Marine Corps in 1979 and then after I got out of the Marine Corps, I became a state trooper in 1985. And so and then, from 1985 to what, last year? January 29th of 2017. 32 wow. years. Wow. That's... 32 years as a state trooper. So what did you do as a state trooper? Well, my last uh, assignment uh, was a chief. Actually, I retired as a chief with the Florida Highway Patrol, and I commanded the, um, the Florida Turnpike Troop K from Orlando down to Miami as a major. Wow. And, and we were talking a little bit the other day. You also kind of led uh, a detachment for the RNC in, in, in Tampa and in Cleveland. Yes. Um, one of my... Uh, uh, job assignments that I did was to uh, run statewide mobile fuel force mm -hmm. and what we did was uh, uh, part of uh, that was to deploy to areas where they had civil disobedience or expected to have civil disobedience. Uh, the last one we went to was the RNC in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that up there. I sent I went up there with 134 troopers Wow! and then prior to that we went to Cleveland, I'm mean, sorry, to Tampa. And, Tampa, Florida. And, and so in a situation like that, I mean, a lot of people saw, you know, the RNC in Cleveland from their living rooms, and there were some protesters. Can, political conventions always have that. So what was the biggest thing going into that that you had to tell your, 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 your troopers uh, about adrenaline control, about self-control, about not getting hot under the collar? Well, he, and, and we see that he he's very patriotic. He's a veteran. He wants to try and, and do some changes. So mm -hmm. can we... Can we seem to, as as Republicans, uh, would it be a violation of our core <laughs> of our core values to support somebody for sheriff if he's running as a Democrat? Scotland, can you can you tell me uh, in your experience what 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 would what would what would really have to happen? Well, because I know who his Facebook friends are mm -hmm. and. Uh, because I'm a millennial, I know what Facebook friends means, which means who you that's who you associate with. I'm, I would never be Facebook friends with someone who is a socialist. I actually unfollow people once I find out they're a socialist um, or a Democrat. So I know I know that he is a Republican, um, and I know the statistics are against him if he were to run as a Republican, um, because a big R would be right next to his name. So I will vote for him. Um, I don't like Mina. I absolutely despise him. I, I think he's just out for the money. He's out for the political advancement. I don't think he actually cares. And um, 
I I support him. I would vote for him even though he's registered Democrat right now because I know he is a true conservative. Wow. So then we definitely have to get, <laughs> get him in the show because that would, that, you know, again, um, I would not make reference to his registration in the Democratic Party because I don't care for them. But um, I would like to really know his, his strategy and how he would be able to, uh, because right now, Scotland, you know, there are places in Orange County that it is a combat zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're not only talking violent crimes, we're talking um, a heroin addiction, meth addiction, you know, uh, 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 again, we're supposed to be the the, the entertainment capital uh, in, yeah. in, 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 in family entertainment, you know, and, you know, walking down the street and seeing, hey, can I have a quarter? You know, I, I make joke in light of it, but the thing is, 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 is we're, 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 what can we do with that? And again, it comes back to the homelessness, so we have to try and get the county involved. Um, but yeah, it, it is, it is, a, it, it is, you know, at you as a youth, um, what questions would you ask him? Well, that's a tough question. Um, I think one would be what are his three core values? Besides being a politician now that he's running and that comes with a lot of baggage, that mm-hmm. name. I would ask him what are his three core values? And they better be God, country, and family. I would hope that would be his answer. Um, and then right there and I hear his soul in my heart and I will vote for him because no Democrat is going to say God, country, family. They're never going to say that. Um, so to me... I would first ask him, what are your three core values? What do you treasure the most? Um, I would ask him the tough questions now that it's a partisan race. Do you believe in abortion? Do you, do you, all the tough questions that come with partisan mm-hmm. races, do you, do you believe in that? And that would come down to, is he truly a Republican or is he truly a Democrat? But I do have to say, I really do despise what Demings did because partisan has not, should not, does not belong. It does not belong in sheriff races. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think party affiliation needs to get out of county races. I think it does not belong. I think it belongs in state and I think it belongs in federal, but when it comes down to county level, I do not think it belongs. I don't believe Democrat or Republican should have an effect on the work that you do on county races because party party issues don't affect counties. Exactly. So I do I do see where we have to kind of in in our local county elections. Yes, we could take because again, a person could be a Republican or a Democrat, but if the if the election itself, the local election, is brought out of uh, 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 the partisanship, uh, we could probably get a little bit better quality of people mm-hmm. running in different types of races. Well, uh, Scotland, we got somebody from uh, 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 down on the south. Louis Mar, how you doing? You, we have a candidate for governor, the first, the first female running for uh, governor of uh, Florida. Right. Of Florida on the Repub- on conservative Republican. Exactly. Louis Martin, how are you doing, dear? How's that how's that campaigning going? I'm just waiting for that one point two million to drop into my hands. I'm I'm very um, I know I might sound a little Pollyannish. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But um there have been a few people that have crossed my path that um, I'm coordinating with them to make it rain manna from heaven. And uh, 1.2 million is all I'm going to need for this campaign. Good, good, good. So you, you're still, uh, that means you're still highly on the fundraising camp, right? Right. And, and to me, it's not going to be so much as getting, um, I, I'm not really, I'm going to be doing this differently. I, I in no way desire to really do fundraising. Um, the 1.2 million would be, let's say, an advance for, a, for the story of my life or even accompanying the campaign. Because that way I can actually focus on putting all that money into the campaign itself. And it's going to be very organic. None of it's going to be as fancy schmancy as uh, what the other candidates have got. But um, the other candidates aren't really qualified. So that's an issue that I think needs to be addressed also, regardless of whether or not I'm a candidate. Um, I'm, you know, you can pretty much figure out that the two top candidates, Putnam and um, DeSantis are not at all qualified for what they're running. And and, and why do you say uh, Putnam is not qualified? That's uh, he's been the uh, commissioner of agriculture, yeah. and um... yeah, yeah I, absolutely. He, but here's the problem: um, under his position as our commissioner of agriculture, he's been in politics for 22 years. 
we've got the problem with the politicians who have basically done nothing in our in our in our the general uh, or the general forwardness that we have to go in Florida. And mm-hmm. what really irks me is that this is a gentleman who, um, it is my understanding that under his auspices, um, he is also responsible or was part of the um, one of the committees regarding the welfare department. And um, if you'll go back during his tenure all these years, our welfare went from 1.75 to 7.5 billion. And I'm trying to figure out why that is something that's not on anybody's lips. And and these two gentlemen, Ron and Putnam, if they're here to protect us, we can't have that kind of budget crisis in our welfare department. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. much of it has to do with the Eagles. And, and I don't say this for me. I think we can all look back at the two years of university degree material that President Trump gave us and basically told us, this is how you do it at your local level. And, and right now, i got to be honest with you, a lot of people are couch patriots. I and see, I see. They're not getting the ones out there to do things, to actually get her done. And they're going through an, an old school of politicking instead of patriotism. And That's my dear, how I see it. and my dear, where where can people where can people see you uh, uh, or uh, um, donate uh, money or uh, do you have like a website that you can shoot out about no, your campaign? What, what what I've got when I when I say organic, I mean mm-hmm. absolutely organic at this point because mm-hmm. for me I've gone through only two social media. I am a voracious reader. I am a, a, a 15 hour a day news gatherer. Mm-hmm. I retain this information and I can put most, uh, most all of it in its proper sequence of logical occurrences. So I've kept myself to my, my two social medias, which is Facebook and Instagram. Okay, and, and so, me, but you filed, it, right? You have, have you filed? No, my, my idea is actually this. I do have a, a, a rather, um, a guitar that has great sentimental value to me. And I wanted to basically, if I reach out to whoever wishes to join me, put together a raffle to where whatever I raffle off this guitar, and there is a history behind it, that I will write it down and give it with, with great heart to the person who um, you know wins it in the raffle or auction. Um, and that money, which I think the guitar should raise about maybe 15000 Mm-hmm. And that twelve thousand of it, I will apply it to my candidacy fee. Right. So this has to come from the heart, and and I know we can gather signatures of people, but I need to show people that I am not bought for any reason whatsoever. This comes from the heart, and there is a history of why it is that I decided to become, uh, uh, you know, governor because I just didn't jump into the fray. So let the fighting let, let the fighting begin, huh? Uh, so you're you're gonna oh, absolutely. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna try and raise the money, and then you're gonna start filing, right? Yeah, I need I need to get this money, and then I put it in there, I file my my campaign, and with the one point two million, I'm getting a motorhome, and I'm traveling all over Florida, and um, I'm gonna dedicate it to to Rosa Parks. I'm gonna dedicate it to the veterans, to the homeless, because. Uh, these politicians have lost sight of what, who they're supposed to serve. And I intend to also donate my salary in full during governorship, exactly like Trump has done. I, I'm the female Donald Trump. I mentioned it last time. Nothing has changed. Other than that, my hair looks a little bit better. I got it cut, and I think I'm now more presentable to the general public. So you're going you're gonna to take a blender? You're going to take a blender to the po- politics in Florida? Absolutely. It, it's time. that if, if nobody learned anything from Trump, oh, woe is you. This man has given free lessons for two years, and, I, and I've said it before, I took so many notes, and I'm not a newbie. Yep. I am here. That's I, am, I am here in, in the city of Doral, and I've attended city hall meetings 100%. I have 900 hours of charter review meeting um, under my belt. So Bruh. well known in my country. Bruh. I have a quick question. Out there person. I have yes. a quick question. Um, as yes. governor, you would be in charge of billions and billions and billions of dollars. Um, I'm Absolutely. on your Facebook right now. Um, what do you think makes you qualified to be in charge of my taxpayer money and the billions of dollars that will, you will be in charge of? 
Well, because I have noticed that we've lowered our standards so much to what we accept from our current leaders that although I may not have an accountant's degree, I would certainly be able to have the best possible attorneys to be able to ferret out exactly where all that money is being wasted because being responsible for billions and billions of dollars, I've noticed in Florida that forever nobody's holding those people accountable for the billions which is why we're in the hole today. I mean, we're one of the only states in the country that has a balanced budget and an actual place in our budget for disasters, which Mike Miller, who is a Republican, fought for that bill in Tallahassee to make sure we had millions of dollars set aside in case another hurricane yeah, happened. Every, every state so will do that. I, personally, state will do that. I, personally, I believe that Florida is doing a pretty darn good job with their budget. I think since we are one of the only states in the country that has a balanced budget, I would say we're good on that end. Um, but I, I'm just I'm I'm speaking on behalf of the American voters, and you know, for me, it doesn't take an accountant to balance a budget, but it takes some type of. You can surround yourself with the best people, but like you're saying, you're another Donald Trump. But Donald Trump was already a billionaire. He knew how to balance his money wisely. He was in charge of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. So, Mike, I'm looking Absolutely. at your I'm looking at your resume, and I I just don't. I'm here to be the the sharp tongue, so I'm going to be that sharp tongue. I just you don't have, see. You have every right, every right to be so. As a and secretary no and clerk, of course, being a secretary and a legal assistant, I just don't see where you have that experience to balance a budget and to keep that balanced budget and be responsible for billions of dollars. So you're you're going to tell me that every single governor had these kind of qualifications to balance a budget? Yes, Governor Rick Scott was a businessman before he was a no, politician. No, no. Every single governor, every single governor. In the state of Florida, of yes, Chris Christie, kind of Bush. Yes, Chris Christie and Bush and Governor Rick Scott, they've all had the experience. And did they not have people around them that would help them appropriate more here or there or do the budget? You don't feel that any other every person has to be absolutely qualified with every single last penny budget, even though, and, and we might add, did not Trump file for bankruptcy three times? Trump filed for bankruptcy because that's what business owners do. When you first start a business, there is a 60 to 70% chance your business will go bankrupt the first year. So you, there's, your chances are against you in your first year. But, well, but the, see, but that's not answering the question. What you brought up was somebody you don't see experience with me being able to handle money. And I'm telling you, yet we voted for a president who experienced three times where he couldn't handle money. No. Is, is, is that the, the, All right. Hold on. Hold on. Peace, <laughs> peace, 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 peace. Louis Mar. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, I understand. I understand. But we have to go to a break. And Louis Mar, this is the Absolutely. this is the entrance, uh, the best part. Esto es lo bueno. Esto es la cuestión de tener este, este, estos debates. Because we have to bring these we have to bring these ideas out. But this is not going to be the Absolutely. last time we speak to you. I do want to uh, want you to come to Orlando, and we're gonna we're gonna sit down and we're gonna debate a little bit more. But do you see the meats and bones of of, of entering a, a, a race, especially uh, the governor's race? Uh, there are these questions. Of course, of course I do. Yeah, and I know you do. I, I, I'll, I'll, accept, I'll accept them all, and I don't jump down anybody's throat. It's a mutual exchange, but I work with facts and logic. All right. And I understand from some of the candidates we have, my gosh, yeah. They shouldn't even be on the ballot, approaching ballot. But that's separate and apart. And Ron exactly. DeSantis, like I said, I I have beef with him, but that's for another chapter. All right. Well, Louis Mar, we're going to we're going to break yes. for for we're going to break for a commercial. I thank you very much for your participation. You do have to come to Orlando uh -huh. because we we need to continue this debate. It's really awesome, and that's you what our. Tell me when. When, when and where? Time. When and where? We'll do the we'll do the uh, we'll we'll get we'll see if I could get any of the other guys to come up because that would be an interesting. Uh, uh, debate to see what happens but anyway I, I, I did one thing you, you just reminded real quick you reminded me on april 2nd i have been invited by the tea party with ken grossman to debate with ron DeSantis and myself my only qualm is that i don't know if they'll want me to do it while i'm still not a, an actual 
name on the ballot. That's what I'm trying to coordinate before then. But right. we will talk again. We'll, we'll, you, you, so keep us, you keep us informed and uh, ya tu sabe que listen to me. We're going we're gonna to see how this, how this plays out. We're going to see how, how, <laughs> what happens. All right? Como gracias, gracias. Obrigado a você. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> See, I can do I can do my Portuguese too. I can do my Portuguese. I, anyway, <laughs> we're gonna I know you got I some, my own problems with her. You got you got, you got some, some something to say. We're gonna get back to that. Mr. Miguel, celebrating one year, vamos para los comerciales. Bohemia 2, marzo 16. Las puertas abren a las 8 p.m. y el show comienza a las 8 y media. Entradas 15 dólares en la puerta y por Eventbrite 10 dólares. Eventbrite.com 10 dólares en la puerta 15 dólares. Si quieres el buffet son 13 dólares adicionales en la puerta. No te lo pierdas, habrá música, comedia, artistas del patio y internacionales. No te lo pierdas en Café Mineiro. 8204 Crystal Clear Lane, Suite 1700, Orlando, Florida. Café Mineiro Brazilian Steakhouse en la 8204 Crystal Clear Lane. Bohemia 2, la extravagancia continúa. Alanas Fantasy te ofrece lo mejor en joyería de fantasía. Bueno, bonito y barato. Llamar al 321-439-8218 para su cita privada. Te llevaremos a la tienda donde ti, Alanas Fantasy, lo mejor en joyería de fantasía. Llama hoy. Alanas Fantasy te ofrece lo mejor en joyería de fantasía. Bueno, bonito y barato. Llamar al 321-439-8218 para su cita privada. Te llevaremos a la tienda donde ti, Alanas Fantasy, lo mejor en joyería de fantasía. Llama hoy. Bueno, mi gente, ¿cómo estamos? Este es Listen to Me. That was Louis Mar. She's uh, professing to be a candidate for governor, but... Um, Scotland, you 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 raised some really, really very <laughs> very. I did very, my research. <laughs> you did the research. She like, mm, mm, yeah. But you know, um, to, to be able to run for 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 a, a seat like the governor governorship of this great state of uh, Florida, you have to have some sort of an experience to be able to handle so many money. Um, so to play, I want to, I want to, exp- I want to, I know she's probably listening, so mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the whole uh, Donald Trump thing. Mm-hmm. So Donald yeah. Trump was a billionaire before he filed for bankruptcy. Um, again, like I said, six, there's a 60 to 70% chance that your business will fail in its first year. He has multiple businesses. So there is a great chance you'll, you'll bankrupt. And Ro- Romney, Romney went bankrupt a couple times and that's mm-hmm. just how businessmen do. Sometimes they'll say, screw it. They'll let their business fall into pieces. They'll let it go into bankruptcy. They'll collect their pieces back together and they'll build it even better. And that's what business people do. They allow things to fail so then they can build it better. And that's what Donald Trump did. And frankly, she doesn't have any experience. Not not even not even a little smidge of something. She's not a business owner. She never owned a business. She's been a secretary. She's always had to answer to somebody else. As mm-hmm. governor, you really have no one to answer to. Mm-hmm. But to play devil's advocate, um, she's 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 using the Trump formula. Yes, Trump has has his business savvy. Uh, many other governors of Florida had their business savvy. But she's saying that she will surround herself with people that will help her guide the state. Now, my only uh, quarrel with that is, well then. Are we voting for her or we're yep. voting for a team of people that she's going to bring in after the election? So the thing is, is when Donald Trump, like she's using the example of Donald Trump surrounding himself with people that know what they're doing. Donald Trump still had a smidge of ideas. Mm-hmm. He was in charge of thousands of people. He was in charge of millions and billions of dollars. He had international um, experience dealing with foreign policy dealing with people from all around the world so he had a bit of experience and he's a smart man mm-hmm. he's an intelligent man you read his um, art of the deal book yeah. it's incredible it's incredible what this man does so for me 
someone just being a secretary. It's like me being a college student and being like, hey, I'm going to run for state rep. And unfortunately, we do have some state reps out there who did, didn't even start college and decided to run. <clears throat> but the thing is, you need to have some life experience. Exactly. You have to, you have to be able to um, know, have a blueprint of how you're going to move the state mm-hmm. forward. And uh, that would be uh, that would be interesting for Louis Mar to come come in and tell us about her her experiences. Again, uh, we we welcome Adam. We wel- welcome Ron. Um, oh, I'll uh, get Ron here. Uh, yeah, uh, we, got, we, we, <laughs> we welcome Ron. We would like to have him over. And we we would like to see what's going on with with the plan because uh, uh, Rick Scott is 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 going to run for Senate. Yeah. Um. So basically, we we, we may be solidifying a, a a very good team for the state of Florida mm-hmm. uh, to be able to move forward. Florida in a very positive way. But again, Miss Scotland, <laughs> getting back to the dino and the rhino, in, is this the future of politics where parties blur? And, and I well, do think. I mean, for her to say she's the only conservative, I have a problem with that because mm-hmm. Adam Putnam, he is such a godly man. Um, he is a conservative. I would say that Ron is a more conservative um, person than him um, in the sense, not Christianity-wise, because as a conservative, you do have the Christian values for the most part. A true conservative, if you look up the definition, it says you stick to your true and original values, which the values of this country is the Protestant. It's the Christian values. So when I when I look at Ron, I love Ron. He loves his military. He served the military. He served this country before even becoming a politician. Um, so his love for this country is very clear. Um, the way he has handled himself in Congress is beyond what I can fathom. He shows that he is a true conservative in mm-hmm. how he votes. Mm-hmm. So for me, I would say he's a bigger conservative than Rubio. I'm not a very big fan of Rubio, but I would say he is outdoes Rubio. So for me, I just, I, from, I hate when another Republican has to put their name in and say, me, 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 even when they know they don't have a chance. Exactly. So we have to. We have to. Because then we're splitting. Now we're doing the presidential election where there's 16 Republicans running <laughs> to all trying to get the vote when she knows she doesn't stand a chance. She just wants to put her name in, be another Republican like Jack. Jack weirded me out the day I saw his face. Um, Jack Lovato, L- whatever his name is, um, he needs to drop out of the race. He has no chance of winning. Ever since the allegations, which I find to be true, um, because of my experiences with him personally and the stories I've heard from other women, mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. needs to take his name out because he doesn't have a chance. Anyone who knows they do not have a chance of ever winning, if you know you're not a true conservative deep down inside, you need to take your name out. Well, the thing is that they want to they want to be part of history in any way possible. And then that's not being a true conservative. Exactly. They're just trying to get their own... They're, they're trying to get their own name into the history books to say, okay, I did this. But it's not the same thing as to say, okay, I did this, than to do like Donald Trump says, oh, by the way, I'm not a politician. I'm going to do this for the first time. And, and guess uh-huh. what? He won. Um, that's still that's still uh, irking some uh, people in the media and the left. <laughs> but you make an interested and valid point, Scotland, that within the local, the local county-wide elections, probably we may, may have to look at the approach of saying, okay, let's put, let's take away the stigma of party lines. Mm-hmm. Let's let's concentrate in the individual. Who wants, whether they're Republican or Democrat, that doesn't, that doesn't shouldn't be the yeah. basis of their uh, election in local Orange County offices, Orange County, Orlando city limits, uh, local elections. When we talk about um, uh, even, uh, I would even go to the to, to as far as uh, as as uh, Tallahassee, our state representatives and our state congressmen. We we think we should kind of eliminate the stigma of uh, party party lines because that way many things could be done. Our senators, our congressmen, our governor. Yes, I still think that that should remain under party lines because that is much more than uh, than 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 local elections. We're talking statewide and nationwide elections. I would even say state representatives should stay partisan in the fact mm-hmm. that state representatives have to deal with things like weed that got passed because the American the Florida voters decided for it and the speaker of the house decided to mess up and ruin things and now Republicans look bad um in Florida. Mm-hmm. But I think 
becoming a sanctuary city, all of that, it really does take partisanship in state representatives. So I think partisanship should stay in state representatives. So statewide? I would say statewide. Anything that has the word state in it or anything that is that go to Tallahassee, if they have to go to Tallahassee, I think it should be partisan. Um, I, I would say anything county, they don't really have any control. They have control over is the budget. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for sure, if they get a little more nitty gritty, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. not, they don't have a, they have a power. I would I wouldn't diminish mm -hmm, their power, mm -hmm. but I don't think partisanship, like the main partisan issues is abortion, is gay marriage, is um, sanctuary cities. That's all partisanship that really county commissioners don't really have control over. That's true. That's true. Well, again, the counterpoints of this of this show is to try and see both sides of the story. I say it should go nonpartisan all the way up to the state level. You say that it should only stick to county and county alone. And, and if it has anything that it has with the state of Florida, it should remain partisan. We will see. What I what I do know, Scotland, is that the next couple of uh, months, uh, the uh, August is going to be interesting. The rest of the election is going to be interesting in 2018. Uh, 2020 is going to be even more. More. It's going to be like stressful. a. It's, it's going to be, be so the, stressful. It's going to be like the Super Bowl of elections, you know. And oh um, they can't take. You know, yo lo que le digo es que no se separen de listen to me. No no dejen de escuchar a Scotland y a, a mí. Porque en el 2018, en el 2020, las elecciones se van a poner bien candente, not only in the United States, but we're going to see what happens finally with Puerto Rico in, in, in its next election in 2020. What happens is, is, the, is this pro-statehood party going to stay? Uh, is Trump going to stay? Um, uh, I say that he is going to stay, and he's gonna, we're going to have eight years of, of Donald Trump. But, you know, we, 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 the, the local elections, the statewide elections, uh, we're going to see if we can have Ron DeSantis Adam Putnam, uh, Mr. Lopez, uh, Joe Lopez, uh, Orange County Sheriff's uh, candidates. George? Um, uh, <laughs> George? George Lopez. No, uh, the comedian. Um, but, you know, we're going we're gonna to try and get everybody in coming to come over here to uh, listen to me. We may have another debate for uh, Orange County Commissioner's District uh, 4, for, uh, see if we could get uh, at least two more candidates to come on in. <laughs> what? Um, but uh, we did make history with the first debate, and um, we, are, we are in the cusp of making more history because nothing like this, nada como esto, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, Scotland, nothing like this is out there right now not even in channel 13 no. not even in channel uh, in, in the local news not even in spanish media and and yes we do speak a little bit more english than spanish but we do represent the spanish speakers out there y nosotros traemos la información a la, a la, a la gente hispana and if they have questions they'll ask us questions because we've we've had, we've we've fended a couple of questions from them um, uh, so basically, that th right now, uh, Scotland, what's uh, August is one of the elections with the county August commission. August twenty eighth. August twenty eighth, and after that, th what's the next election? I think it's November sixth. November sixth. So that's the general twenty eighteen yep. midterm. Um, that's where the governor's race is coming in. Into yes. yes. <laughs> so yeah, so that it is going to be an interesting one. The state of Florida will choose its, its next governor, and then in twenty twenty, Rick Scott is going to run for Senate, right? I talked to him, and he kind of like smiled at me but i was like i'm praying that you run for senate i looked at him and i said god be with you but i hope you run for senate and yeah, he smiled <laughs> nelson is not running anymore He's, he said he said that he wasn't running i didn't hear that you didn't hear that i gotta do a little bit of re research i i, I thought well, I heard because that. because um uh <coughs> morgan said that he should run for governor because he'll have more impact basically saying you don't have any impact right now <laughs> Base, I, th I thought was uh, it was that Bill Nelson's finally going to go and marry uh, Nancy Pelosi, but that's another story. Oh my god, that's they a... make hideous <laughs> Oh my god, just smash their faces together. It's so bad. It looks like a skeleton. Yeah, can it looks you imagine? Like he's dead. Can you imagine a marriage between uh, Bill Nelson? Oh my god, and, and, they'd be perfect. Nancy. They're boring. I and, know. Uh, uh, the, did you see her face in the State of the Union? How, how I had so many inappropriate <laughs> jokes for that. Uh, I was like, what, what do you have in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> like what? What was that? Where? Where? <laughs> yeah, because it was uh, they had their face when when Obama was speaking and then when when Trump was speaking and and, and I'm like, wow, what a difference the president makes! I, wow, it is it is it is incredible. On it's how just people... incredible how bitter she is. Yet she has a multi million dollar house. 
to me, I mean, shoot, I would be that bitter as long as I get a multi-million dollar house. Can I have one? I wouldn't be that bitter. I'm sorry. I'd be like, I don't care who's president. I'm smiling. I have, I have my millions. That's yeah, all I care about. I got my house. <laughs> exactly. Party at my house. <laughs> Arroz con gandula, you know? No, because the, but it is strange because when you're in a position of power like that from the Democratic side, they crave more and then they're not happy with what they have. They want more and they want more and they want more and they want more. They don't now... And, and again, it's, it's, it's based on the history of lies and, 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 and how they drown in their own hypocrisy that Democrats want to try and derail everything that this president has done, yet they approve a two-year extension in their budget. Mm -hmm. They gave him all the cap ceiling. But again, Trump is, is, is he's getting his funding for his wall. Mm -hmm. And I thought the Democrats said, no funding whatsoever for the wall. And you know, these leftist media has not said nothing, nada, silch. Mm, crickets it's like hey kumbaya you know they want to derail the president but then hey well okay we'll give you some money for the wall if you just take away the extension and the ceiling cap and i understand that because right now we have a lot of recovering to do we have to get the infrastructure going we have to help puerto rico we have to help texas we have to have still places in florida that need fixing up from yeah. irma so we understand that we have to spend the money but I, I, I want to see in the long run what he's coming up uh, down the pipeline to yeah. be able to, uh, you know, he did this really good thing with the with the taxes, which people are getting bonuses in now. Thousand dollar bonuses. Yep. Uh, people, other people are getting raises in their in in their in their in their wages. So we have to see. And it's like I said in the beginning um, with Mr. Hector Travieso. Even Puerto Rico is feeling the relief mm -hmm. of what's going on with President Trump and his. His, his 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 relief packages so even for a territory that doesn't have any voice or vote in congress they're treating them well but the 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 leftist media keeps on wanting to be mm -hmm. you know I, do they have like a, a degree in russian already because they've my mom has a minor in Russian literature. Good, because they've milked that Russian conspiracy. Oh I was at the conference <laughs> with Donald J. Trump Jr., and he cracked so many jokes about the Russian investigation. And literally seconds later, my Twitter is going off from CNN talking about how Donald Trump Jr. is making fun of the Russian investigation. And I threw my iPad in the air, and I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I was like, he's making fun of it right now, and you guys have nothing better to do with your lives. But talk about it. Like, I'm looking... I look at their Twitter all the time yeah. and I'm like you're tweeting nonsense like you're not tweeting actual events that are going on in the world I'm like are you kidding me like you guys are actually you guys actually watch this it scares the daylights out of me did you see Rachel Maddow how she freaked out with the with, with the Donald Trump jr. she says that was a travesty to American democracy that he is uh, joking about the investigation. He's joking about the investigation because you have not proved anything, <laughs> anything. It's and this is the same woman that had a Sarah Palin moment back in the day. You know, she had the same glasses, same haircut. <laughs> oh my God, it is, it is gonna come up to be an interesting year, uh, especially here in Florida. Um, uh, we we still have to what what are, what are the parameters that we're waiting for? We're waiting for Pete Clark to commit, right? Yep. <laughs> I have my so, own opinions about. That. So 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 we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna see if Pete Clark commits mm -hmm. um, because there are two other people. There's one more people person uh, other Rob, than Demians, right? Rob Penapena. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to we, say his last name. We, we're gonna get, we're gonna have to get Mr. Penna Penna <laughs> uh, uh, to come to the show and Pete Clark and and um well if Demings wish to uh well you know now that... his wife might have to come with him to guide him yeah you know <laughs> Val Demings might have to describe yeah. him uh, yeah uh, by a know, leash mm -hmm. by a leash and then, come on honey <laughs> well we, right me again we could put Miss Val Demings close to the to the to the refrigerator someplace. We put. We, we definitely. We know she definitely wears the pants in a relationship. I've seen them together, and you yeah. know, you know, that he, she is the man in that relationship. Wow, it's like <laughs> it's like. I get the I get the carapacho, but uh, one the other interesting th thing is we have to um, also see about candidates who's going to be running against uh, Darren Soto, Stephanie Murphy, Val yeah. Demings. Again. 
we're talking about statewide, and have you heard any possible names of people for for to run against Val Demings and for Congress? I haven't heard of anything. You know, I've Patrick. heard all about Murphy. Yeah, I've heard about that shenanigans. Yeah. But. So I think there's a couple of people that are going to be running against her going into a primary. There's right? so many Republicans. <laughs> And they all look the same. <laughs> it's it's kind of like hard to kind of like weed out. Uh, I wish I had like a filter, just pour them down. Okay, this guy's Republican. This guy, like a litmus test. But it, you're right. I think politics is coming so becoming so diluted right now that it, sometimes uh, the party lines or what the party venue wants is not in line with what the people need and the, yeah. and, and, and the candidate wants. Because we don't want to sound that uh, a candidate is going to be a career politician, but you really want to win, run to win, right? You don't, you don't run to just run because, again, we talked about that. Well, People... Scott Skir- Skirgel, Sturgill, I'm horrible with last names. I do no apologize because no I'm Facebook friends with him and his campaign manager. So they're probably going to look at me like Scott, really. But <laughs> I, I, they all have the same platform. The only difference is, is he doesn't agree with the budget that was passed. He's more of the Rand Paul guy. It's mm-hmm. like, you guys need to cut the spending, but in order to cut spending you need to start making money and you need to start creating jobs and in order to do that you have to spend a little bit more because in in trump's experience you spend money to make money and spending a majority of your budget on the military creates jobs unlike in obama's era where he cut the budget in literally in half you look at the little pie and it's cut in half and it's true because the thing of it is if you if you strengthen the the military you strengthen all those communities where there's bases you create secondary and third third uh private contractors private contractors uh so that is what we needed and it hadn't been done in many many years and i'm sorry under even republican presidents the 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 spending for the military was uh beholden of lobbyists Mm -hmm. there were lobbyists and this president They're like screw you <laughs> yeah. he's he's like nope this is this ain't it this ain't me i ain't gonna do it nope. and uh I, he's having fun of it he's having a ho- hell of a ball with it um i think he's doing a very great job uh mr Pre- uh, president donald j trump uh, he has a j in the middle uh, what the hell <laughs> he has a j there twins. So, uh, twins um we may have to we have to we have to talk to donald uh trump jr and see you. i know that the president is a very v- busy man can you imagine having a one-on-one even over the phone with him? Uh, my mom had that with him when he, he was running. When yeah. she was when he was running for um, office, he he went to Florida and he's like, "I want the t- top ten Puerto Rican leaders in Florida," and my mom was one of them. And he was, she was like, it's real. Like the passion and energy he has on stage, it's the same when he's in a room of 10 yeah, people. Yeah. He's like, she's like, I wish to have that energy when I'm 74, 75. Like, yeah. and he oh. only sleeps like four or five hours a day. It's crazy. Yeah. So it, it is, it is an, it, it, he is, has an interesting and um, his family um, will have an impact in politics in the future. Because oh, the classiest family we've ever had. Ivanka, Ivanka, um, uh, uh, Melania. Uh, Melania, Donald Trump Jr. Um, you know, uh, basically those, uh, that name Trump will be in politics mm-hmm. and in business for many, many years to come. Yeah. And let's not write out Mr. Donald Trump in eight years after he gets out of the White House. Uh, something big is going to happen with Mr. Trump after he leaves the White House. Something big is going to come up. Well, the thing is, he's like, him. I'm just going to go back. To, as soon as he's done with his presidency, he's going to be like, I'm just going to go back to my billions of dollars. Yeah, you know. Like, he, 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 does, he doesn't gain anything from being president. If anything, he has more to lose. Exactly. And, 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 and that's what and people don't understand. It. And he says it. He says that he says that he is, he's been told, why have I done this? And again, anybody who studies... And this is for everybody. Si usted quiere saber cómo correr una campaña, ya sea de condado, if you want to know how to run a campaign, even county-wise to state-wise to the presidency, follow what President Trump did. If you really, really want to re- win that race, follow his strategy. His strategy was one of a populist contact with the people. And you said it. He energized 10 or he energized 15,000. That's what every candidate has to do you have to go out and make contact well Scotland it's a couple of minutes till another show in the books anything else that you would like to add um I would just say for those um who are listening do your research on your candidates really research them don't be scared to ask them the tough questions 
um, that puts pressure on them because if they're not prepared, if they're not eligible, if they're not ready to be an elected official, that will show the real deal if you ask them the tough questions. And I would just say keep on watching. We have exactly. a lot more to offer. We do. We sure do. So thank you, Scotland Calhoun, my a very esteemed uh, colleague here in Listen to Me. And she always has that opinion. And that is the opinion <laughs> that we want here in Listen to Me, even though uh, she may tell me to shut up once in a while. But hey, that is really cool. My name is JJ Rodriguez. You have listened to the award-winning Listen to Me TV radio show in Radio UNT. We are celebrating one year old. We're one year old. So we've. <laughs> past that threshold now now next Tuesday news. now next Tuesday I, I can't do the show anymore dude no that's not <laughs> gonna happen <laughs> we're gonna be here God willing next Tuesday and again nosotros auguramos una, un, unas elecciones en el 2018 en el 20, 2020 que van a estar brutales y espectaculares tanto en Puerto Rico la Florida otros estados vamos a estar hablando con gente de Illinois we're going to be talking to people running for Congress in Illinois also and we're going to be breaking a lot of history and making a lot of history so God bless you que Dios me los bendiga en nombre del Padre del Hijo del Espíritu Santo I love you all listen to me listen to me